I'm constantly asked through email and the comment section of my videos, Desert Dog, what's your preferred shot placement? Then people proceed to get mad at me when I tell them that it depends on the animal, the bullet being used, the angle of the shot, and the location where the animal is being shot at. As you all know, internet forums are basically bullshit depositories where everyone's preferred bullet works 100% of the time and other bullets that they don't like don't work at all. <laughs> you know, uh, only one type of shot works and everyone just gets these dramatic bang flops every time they shoot an animal. Well, unfortunately, when most people Google something hunting related on the internet, they end up on some type of internet forum and end up falling for everybody's bullshit. This video is going to be a bullshit free video. Devoid of any bullet fanboyism or exaggerated claims. This video is rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance. There is no one size fits all shot placement for hunting big game. It just doesn't exist. And I'll explain why that is. So sit back and relax as I give you the most objective and realistic lecture on shot placement that you've ever seen. In this video, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes first. So I'm going to talk about shot placement in the first chapter of this video. You should only plan to shoot animals in a spot that will result in a rapid death. But there's other factors that come into play like anatomy, uh, shot angle, bullet construction, the bullet that you're using, um, and things like meat damage. So let's discuss popular shot placement locations that hunters use. The behind the shoulder shot, which is also called the double lung shot or the meat saver shot, is very popular with hunters around the world. It's a big target with lots of room for error, so it's the safest shot to get an ethical kill on a game animal. It also does the least amount of meat damage to the animals that you shoot, which my wife really appreciates because she loves slow cooking those shoulder roasts. <laughs> The only problem with the behind the shoulder shot is that the animal usually runs a short distance before uh, dying. And in some areas that's acceptable, but in other areas that's not acceptable. And next is the heart shot. <laughs> this shot puts an animal down faster than a double lung shot, but the animal still might run a short distance. Even with a, with a, I've seen animals run a short distance, even with a totally destroyed heart. So it, it happens. The heart in many game animals sits very low and far forward. So this can be a risky shot where you might miss under the animal if your shot is a little low, or you might hit the brisket if your shot is a little far forward. I don't recommend this shot from any type of unstable position. The classic shoulder shot is one of the safest and most effective shots. If done right, you take out both lungs, the top of the heart, and possibly render the animal unable to walk as well. This shot has a good margin of error, and animals hit with this shot usually go down pretty fast. The downside to the shoulder shot, though, is meat damage. Depending on the bullet used and the velocity of the bullet, you might totally destroy both shoulders with this shot. The high shoulder shot is a very popular shot because it usually results in what is known as a bang flop. When you need an animal to go down instantly, this is the shot you should use for that. You drill the shot right into the scapula blade of the animal. The margin of error with the high shoulder shot is significantly less than a classic behind the shoulder or shoulder shot, but it's not too bad. Only experienced shooters with an accurate setup should take this shot. You should also only attempt to take this shot from a stable position because you absolutely need to get it right. Another drawback to the high shoulder shot is meat damage. 
Although it doesn't damage as much meat as a classic shoulder shot, it will destroy part of your roast, which, as I said, my wife really doesn't like. Then we have the neck shot. The neck shot is very risky on most animals. The cervical spine on most game animals is long, skinny, and curves in different orientations in relation to the animal's posture. On animals like deer, the spine in the neck is very hard to hit, but a direct hit to the cervical spine will put any animal down immediately. So if you get the shot right, it's a very effective shot. But there are animals like bison where the cervical spine is very easy to hit. So again, individual animal anatomy plays a big part in shot placement. And lastly, we have the headshot. The headshot is obviously effective if you hit the tiny brain or the base of the skull where it meets the spine. But this is the hardest and riskiest shot of them all. I've seen bullets graze off the top of deer skulls and even one asshole that blew the snout off a deer and never recovered it. The one part of a deer that is always in constant motion is the head. And most deer seem to never stop moving their head around, which makes the shot even riskier. I really don't recommend the head shot. So the safest shots are the shoulder and behind the shoulder shot. The heart shot and the high shoulder shot are a little riskier, but a little bit more effective as well. And the neck and head shot are by far the riskiest shots. For the exception of the head shot, I might use all the other shots in different circumstances. In the remainder of this video, I'll cover variables that decide what shot placement is best in different scenarios. Contrary to what you read on internet forums, all big game animals are not anatomically identical. African game animals tend to have vitals oriented more towards the front than your typical deer, elk, or moose. So if you shoot an impala with your classic behind the shoulder shot, like you do on a whitetail, it might be a gut shot. So with most African animals, the classic shoulder shot is used. Also, as I alluded to earlier, bison present a relatively easy neck shot where the base of the skull meets the spine, but most other animals don't. So a neck shot on a bison is perfectly acceptable if it's a broadside shot in my opinion, but most animals, it's not acceptable. Bears are really funky animals with thick fur, lots of fat and loose skin that makes it almost impossible to know where the vitals are in relation to the bear's position and orientation. I usually double lung a bear because it's often hard to tell where the high shoulder shot is on a bear. So animal anatomy will sometimes determine where your shot placement is. So that needs to be taken into consideration. The bullet that I'm using to hunt with is always the determining factor in shot placement for me. You know, I'm a California hunter and I've been using copper bullets for a long time now. <laughs> Probably longer than uh, most of the country's been using them. At first, I was really hesitant to give up my favorite Nosler partition bullets, which always did a fantastic job for me. But as I adjusted to using copper bullets, I found ways to make them more effective. And shot placement has something to do with that. You know, I always used to take that double lung shot on most deer when I used Nosler partition bullets. You know, they'd, they'd always do massive damage to the, young, to the lungs, which, you know, usually ended up turning the lungs to jello. And you'd always get a great exit wound with lots of blood to follow with the nozzler partition. So I got massive lung damage, a quick kill, and no meat loss with the nozzler partition when I took those that classic behind the shoulder shot. But 
when I switched to copper bullets, I quickly figured out that the behind the shoulder shot wasn't optimal with the copper bullets. The monolithic copper bullets did put big holes in the lungs and always gave a good exit wound. And the animal would always die as a result of a good shot. But I noticed that the animals were running, you know, uh, 80 to 100 yards after the shot rather than 40 to 50 yards like they did with the partition. Field dressing animals revealed to me that copper bullets weren't totally destroying or liquefying their lungs like the, the old partition did. So animals took longer to die when I used copper bullets. So I eventually moved to the classic shoulder shot and the high shoulder shot when using copper bullets and I got much better results. But a little bit more meat damage was the trade-off for doing that. Copper bullets are mandatory in my state, so I adjusted by using a different shot placement. There's the entrance wound. Put the rib on the inside. Out the ribs on the other side. And the exit wound. On the other end of the spectrum, frangible bullets hitting at a very high velocity often fail to destroy vitals when they hit bone. You know, a 257 Weatherby Magnum loaded with a ballistic tip hitting an elk shoulder at about 70 yards might not impress an elk at all. So with high speed impacts with uh, frangible bullets, a double lung shot might be more appropriate than a high shoulder shot or, sh or your classic shoulder, sh shoulder shot. So bullet construction and impact velocity should also determine shot placement. You'd be an absolute fool to believe that all animals are going to give you a perfect broadside shot. You know, if you have to take something like a full frontal shot, you're basically forced to try a, a heart lung shot from the front. If the animal is quartering away, a shoulder or high shoulder shot is completely out of the question and the heart or lungs are your main target. If an animal is quartering towards you, a high shoulder or shoulder lung combo shot will present itself in that situation. If an animal is lying down or bedded, a heart shot is completely out of the question and a high shoulder shot is probably the best option in that circumstance. So an animal's orientation has a lot to do with shot placement. The guys back east that shoot from a tree stand have to shoot at unconventional angles and they have to compensate for that. With angled shots, you need to envision a 3D image of an animal to predict the path of the bullet through the animal. The most overlooked aspect of shot placement is the physical location where the animal is standing when you shoot it. <laughs> if you're shooting at an animal that's right next to a 2,000 foot drop off or right next to a property boundary, you can't let that animal run after the shot. It has to be dropped right there. In that situation, a perfectly executed high shoulder shot is pretty much mandatory for recovering that animal. But if I'm taking a shot in a really open area, I might want to save as much meat as possible and take that double lung shot on the animal. In that situation, that double lung shot is, or behind the shoulder shot is a good trade-off because the animal running a short distance after the shot isn't a big deal. And, you know, I, I get perfectly preserved shoulder roasts too. So the physical location where the animal is standing might be an important consideration for shot placement. As I alluded to in the prologue of this video, internet forum experts will claim that 
they use one type of shot placement for all hunting, you know, no matter what the situation. But as you learn in my lecture, that's pure BS. I personally use the classic shoulder shot and high shoulder shot probably most often, especially with copper bullets. But uh, on out-of-state hunts in open areas, I'm probably more prone to take that meat saver shot. When hunting dagaboys in thick jess in Africa, you might only get a, a quartering or full frontal shot. And when you're only presented those opportunities, you know, uh, you have to select your shot placement accordingly. You're probably not going to get a perfect broadside shot ever on those hunts. But one thing I want you to consider is that Anything other than a double lung or a classic shoulder shot on a broadside animal is going to require a high degree of precision. If you attempt one of the riskier shots, make damn sure that you're in a very stable position. You know, uh, you know where to place the shot, you know your distance, and you can properly read the wind before you take that shot. I've seen countless people miss high shoulder shots at longer ranges. I also highly recommend that you study the anatomy of the animals that you're hunting. This is especially important for angled shots, which require you to kind of imagine a three-dimensional view of the vitals so you can predict the path the bullet takes through the kill zone. This is also why using bullets that track in a straight line through animals is very important. In the end, the most important advice I can give you is to not take shots that you're not 100% a, a comfortable taking. The desired result is a quick, clean death, so never lose sight of that. I made every attempt to make this video as short as possible while still providing my viewers the fundamental aspects of shot placement. There's many books out there that provide detailed images for shot placement on specific animals, and I really recommend that uh, you study that literature. You can reach me with any questions or comments at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.